to our channel Coffee with Coach. Today we'll be discussing a very important topic for all the engineering graduates and that is the preparation strategy for e-litmus. I know many of you haven't heard the word e-litmus. E-litmus is an Indian organization started by an ex-employee of Infosys. It helps in the employer and the employee both. It is actually, it works as a medium. How it works? They conduct an examination called e-litmus pH test. The students, the graduates give the examination and based on the score, the company select them. Let me tell you guys, this is a very good opportunity for all the students who does not fall in the tier 1 colleges. You can earn a very good package and even a product based company by sitting in an e-litmus examination. They give a very lucrative package starting from near about 4 lakh rupees. Yes, even in your campusing you will get a package near to 3 lakh, 2 lakh, 1 lakh and even sometimes lesser if your college is not a very elite college. So if you are not from an elite college, then you must sit for an e-litmus. Now comes the question, when you guys should for the e-litmus examination? In your fourth year, you can sit for the examination. Actually, that is the perfect time for you to sit for. Because to get call from good companies with good packages, you need a very high score. And trust me guys this examination this ph test is not very easy some people compare this ph test with the cat so if you want a good package in a good company and a good career then you must go for e litmus so for that let me take you through the preparation strategy for e litmus Watch this video till the end because this is really, really very important for you. Now, let us quickly look at the sections that you're going to sit for the examinations. There will be three sections. The first section that you have to attempt is problem solving and reasoning. The second section is quantitative aptitude. And the third section is verbal ability. I'm going to talk up in detail about each and every section but first let me tell you from which section how many questions come so from every section you will get 20 questions so in total there will be 60 questions from each section 20 questions every section has different difficulty level i'll discuss in detail which section to attempt and how many to attempt to score a really good marks in the first section, the problem solving and reasoning, as I told you, you will get number of question 20, total score will be 200. Similarly, the second section, quants, will also contain 20 questions with 200 of total marks. Third section is of verbal ability, 20 questions of 200 marks. Overall, there will be 60 questions of 600 marks. So that means your each question will be near to 10 marks. So moving on to our first section, problem solving and reasoning. Let us quickly go through the syllabus. The first chapter that you will get it here is crypto arithmetic. Second is logical reasoning, data interpretation and data sufficiency. You can clearly see here that the syllabus here is very parallel to the CAT syllabus. Guys, one important aspect in e-litmus examination is that it is a pen and paper based examination. So, there is no such time limit section wise. So, this adds up to your advantage if you utilize it properly and you know where to attend and how much to attend from which sections. So for that, for each section, I'll be guiding you through how many questions are there and even how many questions you should attempt to get a very good marks. So from this section, you will have 
four chapters, four main chapters. In crypto arithmetic, you will near about get three questions. From logical reasoning, you will get near to eight questions. From data interpretation, five and sufficiency, four, which adds up to your 20 questions. So, this is what the chapter and our overview all about. Now, let me take you through the strategies for problem solving and reasoning. What you should do, as you have seen that crypto arithmetic is three questions and this is a very tough part in elitmus because they will give you certain questions which becomes very hard to solve in a given period of time so what you what your target should be in this section is to attempt near about 10 questions if you are attempting to 10 question you will have a high percentage to attend a good marks and here good marks means 90 percent and above do not get in any section below 90 percent as getting below 90 percent will decrease your chance of getting a call from a very good companies with a good package so when i am taking you through the videos i really want you to be in one of the top notch companies with a good package over here so whatever the strategies i am telling you will be beneficial for you to get into a good company with a good package no matter from which college you are in this section one more thing to note crypto arithmetic data interpretation and data sufficiency really plays a very scoring part so try to practice at least more of data interpretation and data sufficiency because as i told you this is completely the data sufficiency and interpretation is completely basically a logical questions which will enhance if you practice it more and it sums up to nine marks so if you concentrate on this questions more and try to solve crypto arithmetic questions as well it is very beneficial if you can hold your hand on this three topic and if you want us to make any video on crypto arithmetic then do comment us and let us know that you are facing a problem in it so that sir can make a video on crypto arithmetic for you guys so second of all that is what i was telling you data interpretation crypto arithmetic and data sufficiency really plays a high importance section then comes your logical reasoning though you will have more question but it is of a medium importance because this entire examination is based on your percentile not percentage i hope you know what is the difference between percentage and percentile if you do not know or you need us to explain you then do comment us below so moving on to our next section the section two quantitative aptitude let us see what are the chapters of quantitative aptitude so the chapters are geometry speed time and distance mensuration time and work number system probability permutation and combination and some miscellaneous questions will come from topics like progression algebra etc it's a very important section and it's a very scoring section if you have a good practice on quants so let's see quickly the strategies that you should apply in this section so what should be the strategy of yours to crack the quantitative aptitude section first and foremost is again try to at least score 10 questions correctly over here and let me tell you guys try to attempt questions which you are 110 percent sure because this is not an examination which does not have a negative marks in a simple way this examination do have negative marking so be careful in the end of this sections i'll be explaining you the negative marking schemes that elit must follow so keep connected with us so as i told you there will be certain chapters from this quantitative aptitude so let us quickly review which chapters and how much important which chapter will have first and foremost it the number system is very very important geometry 
time, speed and distance, these three chapters really have a paramount importance in ELITMAS examination. It holds a very important role. So you should practice these chapters very thoroughly. Then comes the chapters like probability, permutation, combination, time and work, progression. So these chapters are of medium importance. There hardly comes a questions from time and work. So first you practice the chapters which are very important then go for the medium important and at last go for the chapter like mensuration. So this should be the strategy at least the chapters which I have told you very important you should be 120% confident to solve those section and quant is a section which you can solve only if you have practiced the sums. We have given different videos on different quantitative sections. You can go through our videos and if you want us to make a specific video on e-litmus then of course comment us below. Your likes and comments really inspire us to make such videos and come back to you. So moving on to our last section that is verbal ability and let me tell you guys this is a very easy section in all the three sections. So here also try to attempt and answer correctly 10 to 12 because I am telling you more because verbal is a very easy chapter in litmus examination. What? Let us quickly review the what are the chapters that can come over here. First is reading comprehension, para jumbles, sentence completion based on vocabulary, sentence completion on subject work and some grammatical questions. So what you have to do is my suggestion for this section is as I told you clearly that this will be very easy. Try to score more here. Even you can score more than 15. You should score more than 15 correct answers because in this section you the difficulty level will be quite easy for you. So if you uh, uh, so if you score more in this section it will be beneficial for you. So there will be near about three comprehension that you have to face. Two questions of para jumbles, two questions from sentence completion and four subject verb agreement questions. So guys, this section is an easy to solve. Let us quickly review what should be the strategy of yours to solve this section. In this section, the most ha uh, important will be your comprehension. Comprehension will take your time. So try to practice as much as comprehension as you can for this section. Then it comes your para jumbles, vocabulary and grammar. Try to practice more of the vocabulary section because if your vocabulary is good, it will be a piece of cake for you to crack this section. So with this, I have covered all the three sections that you will face in the examination and the strategies that you should use while going for this examination. And now I think you are ready to start your preparation. But guys, at least take two months and give your best two months for this preparation because this is the last golden key that you have to get into a big company. So as I mentioned you, I'll discuss the scoring pattern for e-litmus. It means here I'll be discussing the scoring pattern for e-litmus. As I mentioned you before in the video that e-litmus follows a different method of negative marking which is also called handicap based negative marking. What it means? The negative marking is done based on the number of questions attempted by the candidate and the accuracy of wrong answers. So for example, if 24 questions are answered, 25% or 1 fourth of 24 is what? 6. So if of this 24 question following can be the scenario the scenario 1 19 right attempts and 5 wrong attempts so there will be no negative marking 18 right attempts and 6 wrong attempts no negative marking but 17 right attempts and 7 wrong attempts negative marking only on the one question that is after making 6 wrong attempt you will be penalized negative marking for only one question. So I hope you have understood the negative pattern for any difficulties, any problem. Please do comment us. We'll be happy to help you. So if you have liked our video, please give us a thumbs up. 
comment this and if you haven't subscribed our channel till now do subscribe our channel fill the form from the description and join our whatsapp group and do not forget to press the bell icon because all the videos that we make is really important for your career with this all the best bye bye